We are continuing to interview the candidates for major office here on 207. With us tonight, the Democratic nominee for governor. Janet Mills is the Attorney General of Maine. She has also served in the Maine Legislature and was the District Attorney for Androscoggin, Franklin, and Oxford Counties. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. The Portland Press Herald had an interesting article just a couple of days ago about how the state relies heavily on borrowing through bonds to pay for road and bridge repair and maintenance. Money isn't coming out of the regular annual budget. We're borrowing yes. a lot of money instead of paying the bills. Here's the question. Would you favor raising the gas tax in order to generate more money for roads and bridges in Maine? I would not favor raising the gas tax at this time. <clears throat> I would call together groups like the engineers, the, main, the better transportation folks, the truckers, and the people who use the highways the most to figure out the best way to better fund the roads. The fact is the American Society of Civil Engineers rates our roads a D and our bridges a C minus. That's a dangerous situation. We've got to do something about fixing the roads. More and more electric vehicles are on the roads, and I applaud that. I support that. But there's got to be a better way to pay well, for the roads. What is your idea for coming up with a way to pay for the roads? Well, I'm not the expert in this way, in this area. So that's why I would call together groups like the better transportation folks, the truckers, and the people who use the roads, and figure out the best way. Here's we a thought: the truckers are probably going to say, "Don't raise our taxes." That's a thought. But let's look at what other states do, what other countries do. I'm open to all suggestions. I'd like to see what they do in other countries. How do they measure your travel? How do they measure how your usage of the roads? And how do they better gauge? Uh, support for for improving the roads. We've got to do something because they're in terrible shape. Let's stay with the tax issue for just a sec. New Hampshire, as you know, has no sales tax, no income tax. Yeah. That's a significant competitive advantage. If you were the governor and a business came to you and said, we're trying to decide, should we expand in New Hampshire? Should we expand in Maine? What would you say to persuade them to, to grow in Maine? I would talk to them about our work ethic, about our workforce, about the best people in the world to work here and uh, to hire to work here, the best natural resources, the best quality of place, and a better school system. We have a much better education system than New Hampshire does because we fund it more appropriately than they do. Uh, and I would talk to them about the pine tree zones and all the tax benefits we offer to businesses moving here with a commitment to hire a number of people and to keep people on payroll for a certain period of time. I would want a commitment and maybe a clawback if they don't fulfill their promise. I don't want to see what happened with Kate Street happen again. I don't want us giving away millions of dollars to companies to come here with great promises, empty promises as it turned out, and not fulfilling them. Let's talk about energy for a moment. Governor LePage has vigorously opposed offshore wind projects. Would you as governor be more interested in that avenue? You know, I want to be the promoter-in-chief, the recruiter-in-chief, and the closer-in-chief. When you cut a deal with a company like Statoil or Aquaventus, then you, stay, you stick with your word. People expect us to not just talk the talk when it comes to renewable energy and all other matters, but to walk the walk. That's what I would do. I think we have, in the Gulf of Maine, the most incredible source of wind power, better than any other place on the, on the East Coast. I would not be issuing executive orders that pretend to be moratorium. I've talked to business people uh, in Renewable Energy Association, and they are appalled at what, what LePage did, Paul LePage did in February, issuing that executive order that put the kibosh to tens of millions of dollars so of investments support, in Maine. Would I would support continuing one? the research and development that we're doing now in Orono. You know, the governor of New, New Jersey issued an executive order to the opposite effect. He authorized 3,500 megawatts of power from offshore wind in New Jersey. The investors and suppliers are going to Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New Jersey, and not to Maine. I want them to come here. All right, CMP wants to build a 145-mile transmission line across Maine that would essentially send power from Quebec to Massachusetts. Do you support that? I've been looking at both sides on that issue. I still have a lot of questions. I'm concerned. I read in the paper this morning that Governor Page just made a secret trip to Spain to visit with somebody at Ibadrola. That concerns me. What deals are being cut here? Doesn't the public have a right to know? I'm concerned about the environmental consequences. This is my part of the state, you know, Western Maine, Somerset and Franklin County, and uh, I'm concerned about what it's going to do to our part of the world here. Uh, I'm a fisherman. I like the Kennebec do Gorge. Do you support or oppose the pipeline, uh, the transmission line? I don't have all the, all the answers yet. I don't have the information, nor does the public have all the information that the public needs to weigh in on this. I'm not in the government. If I were governor, I'd be holding their feet to the fire. I'd be getting all the answers. How much money are they going to make on this? How much might or might not come back to Maine consumers, Maine ratepayers, as opposed to Massachusetts ratepayers? Let's look at all the facts. They're not sharing. 
<laughs> the main lottery system takes in millions of dollars a year. Do you buy lottery tickets? I have not bought a lottery ticket. My husband used to buy lottery tickets, and I have not bought lottery it's tickets. It's shown that the money from lottery sales comes disproportionately from poorer communities. Is it time for the state to get out of the lottery business? Great question. You know, it was very controversial at the time it was invented, uh, instituted in the early 70s, but it's a very popular thing. I wouldn't put the kibosh to it. I stand in line every day at the you know grocery store, the local corner stores, and people are always buying lottery tickets. That's part of their hope for the future, I guess, and I think I wouldn't deprive them of that. Uh, it's become a mainstay of our budget, mainstay of our uh, culture, and uh, I wouldn't uh, just say slash the, the lottery, no. That's the last word. <laughs> Janet Mills, Democratic candidate for governor in Maine. Thank you for being with us. We Thank appreciate you. it. Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Still to come.